Hi guys, it's Sunday and I'm about to head up to the boat, but before leaving there's one thing I wanted to mention and that's the fact that the second showing yesterday apparently went really well. The real estate guy thinks that the potential buyers are ready to make an offer, but of course it's still far from being a done deal. The next step will be to have a surveyor come have a look at the house and then when the potential buyers have seen his report then they can make an offer. So yeah, still very far from being a done deal, but exciting nonetheless. Let's get going. Oh, you might be wondering about the uh, jacket. Well, welcome to the uh, Danish version of summer. It's 14 degrees Celsius outside, it's raining, and apparently later today we're going to be approaching gale force winds. I am going to be sanding fiberglass today, so I better bring this guy. Although the weather forecast predicts winds approaching gale force later today, once we get up to the marina and skiva, you'll probably notice that it isn't all that windy up there, and uh, I'll show you why. It's about an hour later, and I've just arrived here at the marina. What I wanted to show you is this huge forest behind me. That's located directly west of the marina and actually does a great job of blocking the wind whenever it's coming out of the west, which is usually the case around these parts. And that's a good thing when you want to live aboard your boat. Anyway, let's head down to the boat and get started. The first step will be to sand the stringers and remove the excess fiberglass I glassed on there Friday. So uh, yeah, let's go have a look. Things are looking good up here. The stringers have cured nicely, so uh, let's go ahead and remove these spacers. We don't really need those anymore. The stringers are ready for sanding now, so I'll remove my jacket and then we'll go hook up my sander to the vacuum. And uh, look what I brought. Duct tape. No more of that sucky electrical tape. Sanding is never really fun, but it's a lot less sucky to do when you don't have to deal with all the dust. The good news is that I'm done sanding up here in the V-Birth. I've just finished off the stringers by hand just to make sure that they're absolutely smooth and, and prepped for paint. But before painting, uh, I want to give this entire place a quick wipe down just to get rid of the dust that's clinging to the bulkheads and everywhere else. Now that the V-Birth at least feels a little bit less dusty, let's go ahead and give the stringers a quick wipe down with some grease remover. Everything's prepped for paint now, but there is still one thing we need to figure out, and that's the uh, alignment of the horizontal slats. So, how do we figure out the horizontal alignment of the slats? I've got a choice to make, because here in my boat, the deck and this bunk right here, those are not parallel. The deck sort of curves up towards the bow of the boat. So I've been recommended to just let the uh, horizontal slats follow the curve of the hull so that they'll come down at a bit of an angle. So let's see how that'll look. I've put a spacer down here because I don't want the horizontal slats to rest on the bottom of the bunk. So that's 57 centimeters. I don't know if it's going to look like it on camera due to the wide angle lens of the GoPro, but this horizontal slat is now parallel with the deck. Especially considering how it looks from out here, I am definitely going to align the horizontal slats with the deck. This is how it's going to look with my mattress in place. I actually thought it would be much more pronounced, but uh, this is going to look pretty sweet. Before pricing out what this little project would cost me, I wanted to go with either cheek or mahogany for the horizontal slats. I found the prices for both those species of wood to be outrageous, so I chose to go with pine instead, and uh, after telling you guys about that, a few comments suggested that that maybe wasn't the best species of wood due to its ability to expand and contract. So I went up searching on the interwebs, and I managed to find a much, much, much better deal on mahogany. 
So it turns out that I'm actually able to do the horizontal slats out here in the deep earth using mahogany for roughly double the cost of this pine, which is really, really cheap. So I've ordered a small sample of the mahogany and that'll get here next week, which I'm very excited for. But I have one little question for you guys. And the question is, will I be able to varnish the mahogany before attaching it to the vertical stringers? The mahogany does have to adopt a curve of about one and a half centimeters over two meters. The reason I ask, of course, is that it would be much easier for me to varnish the mahogany pieces back at the house. They'll need roughly five or six coats of glossy varnish and one coat of satin varnish to match the rest of the trim in the boat. So that's a lot of trips driving up here just to apply one coat if I'm not able to varnish them back at the house. Now that we've figured out the horizontal alignment of those slats, I've just double checked my measurements to make sure that everything was correct. And uh, if the mahogany samples turns out to be good, I can in fact order all of them straight away. Now let's go ahead and get some paint on those stringers. I'll be using this stuff, some two part epoxy primer. I won't need all of this, so let's just go ahead and mix up half. Whoops! I almost forgot my gloves. One of the upsides to using these tiny pieces of oak for the stringers is that I'll never run out of stir sticks. This stuff smells absolutely horrible, but at least you remember to wear your mask that way. I'm not worried about painting on the hole because the insulation is going to cover that. Just like that, it's four hours later. I've spent the past four hours just doing some odd tasks about the boat and also shooting another video for you guys. So there should be some mid-week entertainment for you. I hope you'll appreciate that. The stringers out in the V-Birth should be just about ready for the second coat. But before doing that, there's one other thing we should do. Someone that's uh, seen my videos on YouTube just popped by the boat and that's always fun. Anyway, let's get on with this. You guys might remember this box from the beginning of the previous video. I picked that up at a hardware store in the very beginning of that video. Inside this box was this little guy and this measures distance using a laser. It's quite cool. What I want to do is measure all of these little areas to see if I've got enough insulation to complete the V-Birth. This is a pretty cool little gadget, but uh, I didn't purchase it for, for this purpose. We'll get to its real purpose in an upcoming video. For now, let's get the uh, second coat on those stringers. Then we have the stringers with their second coat of paint. Next weekend, I should be able to put up insulation out in the V berth. That'll be a big step in the right direction. There is one little but though, but we'll get to that. For now, let's head on back home to Jökul and I'll end this video back at the house. Jökul has had his walk and I've had my dinner, so the very last thing I need to do tonight is to measure the insulation. Looks like I need to order about three meters more of this stuff, uh, plus an extra meter for this guy apparently. Before ending this video I wanted to show you this. This is the fabric I'll use for the boxing for the mattress for the EV berth. So that should make for an interesting video. Okay guys, I'll go place an order for that insulation right away so that we can get one step closer to finishing the EV berth next weekend. So yeah, I guess that's it for this video guys. See you! The stringers are ready for sanding now, so I'll remove my jacket and then we'll go hiccup, hiccup, hook up, Jesus.
near teeth because that would look really swell. Swell? Jeez, that's a nice word. At first I wanted to use mahogany because the rest of the boat's mahogany is trim. Nope, that is not correct, Mass. The uh, horizontal slats out here using mahogany for just about double the cost of what pine would cost. Cost, cost. Yukul and I hope you've enjoyed this video. To be notified about new content, please click subscribe. If you're new to the channel, I suggest you check out the introduction playlist. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and feel free to leave a comment.